Good. Okay. Uh, my name is Jared Blumenfeld. I'm the Secretary of the California Environmental Protection Agency. And uh, it gives me great pleasure to start this press conference uh, with the California Attorney General, Javier Becerra. And um, let's take it away. To Secretary Blumenfeld, thank you very much uh, for letting us be here. To uh, Chair of the Air Resources Board, Mary Nichols, who I will introduce next. I want to thank her for everything she has done over the years for our great state and the people of California. And certainly then we will hear from our governor who has led these fights uh, in not only his term as governor, but throughout his term in public office. And we're pleased that we can join with him. If I can take a moment before I begin my remarks to just recognize uh, our CHP officer who died yesterday uh, in the line of duty. CHP officer Andre Moyer was killed in the Riverside area. Uh, two of his fellow officers were injured. This happened the same day that uh, we put to rest Officer Diaz from the LA Police Department. And I, I think all of us understand the pain of a loss like that. Uh, but it's important when you have a public servant and someone who puts on the uniform who, who perishes, uh, we have to fight. And that's why we try to make our place, our state, our communities as safe as we can. Today we're here to talk about something very important to the people of California as well. Something that helps protect the lives and will save lives if we can fight for it here in our great state of California and throughout the country. And that's the Clean Power Plan. The Clean Power Plan was instituted to help us move in the direction everyone, and not just in America, but in the, in, on this planet knows, towards a cleaner place so that our kids can grow up and thrive as well. The EPA and the Trump administration know climate change is real. At least they should. They said so in the National Climate Assessment Report that they issued last year. Yet here we go, President Trump once again, attempting to gut our nation's clean power plan. That effort is foolish. It's a toothless substitute that they present in the place of the Clean Power Plan. It's more of a fossil fuel protection plan, and it is ill-advised, but more importantly, it's against the law. Our effort on the Clean Power Plan to save it and to actually build on it is not just about saving the environment, it's about saving lives. We already know we can surpass the Clean Power Plan's benchmarks that were set back several years ago. But the EPA and the Trump administration want to move us backwards. It's like teaching your kids addition and subtraction when they've already mastered multiplication and division. President Trump, catch up. America's ready for calculus and trigonometry and much more beyond. There is nothing clean and affordable about the plan that EPA has put forward as a substitute for the Clean Power Plan. The EPA and the Trump administration are backsliding once again, bending over backwards for special interest at the expense of the public's interest. Devastating wildfires and mudslides, life-threatening drought, sinking water tables, intense heat waves, extreme and unbalanced temperatures, choking smog. California doesn't have time for flimsy, fake substitutes to clean power. Our health, our economy, our future as the engine of prosperity and innovation in America are at stake. Remember, pollution doesn't respect borders. President Trump can't wall off dirty power plant emissions with his toothless substitute for the clean power plan. The EPA, remember, was created way back in 1970 out of growing concern that our environment was degrading. The agency was charged with protecting our environment from the pollution that endangers public health and welfare. As courts have recognized, part of the EPA's duty is to address carbon dioxide pollution. And more of that pollution comes from fossil fuel fired power plants than from any other type of stationary source. And it, when it comes to addressing those plants' pollution, we still have work to do. Here in California, we're leading the way, pursuing cleaner energy sources and taking on climate and the climate crisis in every way we can. And it was expected to eliminate, the Clean Power Plan was expected to eliminate as much as uh, climate uh, pollution 
as emitting more than 160 million cars a year, or 70 percent of the nation's passenger cars, and the plan was estimated to prevent up to 3,600 additional deaths annually if it were kept in place. But instead of following that plan, this administration is allowing temperatures to rise, sea levels to rise. This administration has decided to repeal the Clean Power Plan and replace it with a toothless substitute. In California, groups like the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power are closing in on sub-$20 per megawatt hour price points for solar storage power purchase agreements. And it's likely that solar prices will dip below $15 per megawatt hour by 2022. Coal, on the other hand, which this president seems to want to protect at all costs, is running at $60 per megawatt hour. That's why today California, joined by 20 other states and seven cities, is challenging the Trump administration's decision to repeal the Clean Power Plan and replace it with the so-called Affordable Clean Energy Rule, or the ACE Rule. But as I said, it's anything but clean, and it's anything but clean energy. President Trump's attempt to gut our nation's clean power plan is just the wrong way to go. And it's the wrong way to go with the law for three reasons. First, attempting to replace the clean power plan with this alternative that doesn't meaning meaningfully reduce power plants' greenhouse gas emissions violates the EPA's duty under the Clean Air Act to address the carbon pollution from power plants. Second, the new plan proposed by this administration would artificially narrow the EPA's regulatory authority under the Clean Air Act in a way that runs directly contrary to Congress's intent for the EPA to address monumental sources of pollution. And finally, the Clean Air Act requires the EPA to use the best system of emissions reduction available. And this rule is by far the best available. It is time for this administ administration to grow up. It is time for us to take climate change seriously. In California, that is what we do. We're prepared to confront the climate crisis head on, and that's why we're prepared to confront the Trump administration head on in court. We intend to fight this change. We intend to fight for a clean climate for everyone. We intend to save California's prosperity, and we intend to work hard to save this planet as well. With that, let me turn it over to Chairwoman Mary Nichols. Thank you very much. You know, uh, this, uh, President Roosevelt uh, quote, which I would like to paraphrase, is speak softly and have a really good lawyer. And we do. <laughs> we do. Uh, time and time again now, California has uh, sued the federal government for failures and dereliction of duty under the Clean Air Act. Sometimes people say, why do you need to do this when uh, California can do so much on its own? And it's true. Yesterday, Governor Newsom released the results of our latest inventory showing that we're now using zero carbon power 50 percent of the time in our state. Those statistics are translating into healthier lungs for our children, and they point the way to stop global warming. But the federal plan, the ACE plan, as it's called, is trying to reverse the progress that California and other states are making and to keep the oldest and dirtiest coal plants in the country on life support. As the Attorney General said, it fails at the test both of economics and law, and it tries to send us backwards. And this hurts our efforts in California as well, because we, despite the fact that we have a lot of ability to go on our own, are part of a region. We're part of a region-wide grid. We're part of a national electrical system. And this effort to roll it back will hurt our efforts to keep moving forward. So I think that's enough for me. I'd like to turn it over to the man who's leading this effort for the state, Governor Gavin Newsom. Uh, well, one wasn't prepared for that brevity, my gosh, but uh, she'll be here for questions, and uh, obviously she's been here uh, for your kids and my kids, because that's what this is about. It's about generations uh, that we're fighting for. This is not just about fighting 
uh, Donald Trump. This is about our kids and our grandkids. This is about clean air. This is about clean water. This is about endangered species. I'll say it. I kind of miss Richard Nixon. 1973, he said, people of this country have the right to know if their president is a crook, and that's when he released his taxes. 1973, signed the Endangered Species Act, protecting bald eagles, humpback whales, protecting the California condor, the sea otters. I can go down a, a list. EPA was conceived during that administration. I mean, remarkable progress was made in a bipartisan way on low carbon green growth, or at least a consciousness of sustainability, a mindset that has been carried forward uh, for a generation until today. Here we are yet again uh, in a position where we don't want to be or need to be, and that is defending the values not only of this state, but I would argue the values that are broadly embraced across the United States. The country, the world is looking to us to lead, looking to the Attorney General of the State of California to sue, to defend those values. Uh, we choose to do that because we must do that. We choose to do that because so much is at stake. This Clean Power Plan, as you know, was enacted in 2015 was stayed in the courts um, and so much has happened even since 2015 to only underscore the purpose and sense of urgency and need to advance it but of course uh, the Trump administration feels differently they're rolling things back into an age that no longer exists trying to prop up the coal industry that is literally despite all of these efforts, suffering in historic ways, suffering from progress, suffering from innovation, suffering uh, from a frame in the future. Uh, California is in the future business, and we are leaping ahead. As Mary noted, 52% uh, of uh, those sources of electricity last year were non-carbon. Second year in a row, we've reached those 2020 goals before those uh, before 2020. We're well on our way to meeting our audacious goals in 2030, and that's to roll back our greenhouse gas emissions 40% below 1990 levels, not just getting to 1990 levels by 2020, which we have already done in the last two years. As we grow our economy at a much faster clip, eat your heart out, Donald Trump, then the United States itself. A quarter of the nation's jobs, PolitiFact, forgive me, 21 percent last quarter, emanating from the state of California. The nation's economic engine is this state, and we are rolling back our greenhouse gas emissions, proving the paradigm, leaping forward, asserting ourselves, not just on a national, but an international stage, because we see where the world is going, where the future lies, and we are anticipating it, and we are preparing for it. So I'm very honored to be here with so many leaders, including uh, the former regional director of the EPA, who is now your EPA director, Darren Blumfeld, who's been on the leading and cutting edge during the Obama administration when these rules were being advanced and enacted here now to protect and preserve the values from a state frame, and attorney general that now, at least on 54-plus occasions, is asserting his leadership uh, and, uh, and continuing to build coalitions. I just will close with this. It's all about coalition building. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of those 20 other states, those cities and other jurisdictions that have joined this lawsuit. Uh, I couldn't be more pleased that the Attorney General, without getting ahead, is already working collaboratively with the state of Massachusetts on the endangered species question. I couldn't be more proud that in a few days we'll be talking about what we're doing uh, with the Attorney General on protecting uh, our diverse communities as it relates to these new rules on public charge. I couldn't be more proud to be a Californian. And I say that in closing as I began. Um, this is about our kids and grandkids. And all I will ask is to this administration, you know, how can you look the eyes of your grandkids and kids and say that anything you are doing is about them? They're in the short-term business. They are absolutely, absolutely neglecting the next generation and shame on them, but couldn't be more proud of all of you and 
us in the state of California. We're happy to answer any questions. So if you have questions, we have like five minutes for questions. If you could say who you want to answer the question in the question, that would be great. Thank you. That's right. It's a diverse coalition. It's states, local governments. It's communities with concerns knowing that we can achieve this. Uh, you don't need to do it the old way to do it better. And we have a coalition that's making that very clear. They don't want to go back to the old way. In fact, it would be too expensive for many of our states to try to go back to doing it the old polluting way. We've made too many investments. Our business communities are way beyond. As I said, we're not doing addition and subtraction anymore. We're doing the higher math now, and we know the solutions are there. So the reality is that everyone should catch on. The Clean Power Plan was a good step, but we we're already beginning to achieve the markers of the Clean Power Plan, and we were ready to go beyond, and many of those states are as well. Other questions? That's a fabulous way of getting to PG&E question. <laughs> Why don't we get to that? Uh, I would like, look, let me just, without taking too much time on that, we want more competition in that space. I've asserted that publicly. I've asserted that in a letter that we sent to PG&E. Uh, we are aggressively trying to pursue more and more competition uh, so it's not just the individual uh, that you reference, including municipal competition. Other questions? Shocked. Wow. Take advantage okay. of that, Jared. Yeah. Run. Yeah. Yeah. Run, don't walk. Yeah. I love it. What about states that rely on Mary, this you, you this you consumes you. Yeah, yeah. so uh, even states that uh, don't have anything like the resources that we do in terms of solar, wind, geothermal, are part of a regional grid. Every part of this country now, thanks to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, is assigned to a regional area. They share electrons, they share power lines. It doesn't work state by state anymore. That's an old model. It's a 19th century idea that you're hooked up to one power plant, and that's where you get your electricity from. We get electricity from all over the western United States, and we also generate electricity, which could be sold all over the United States. So the idea behind the clean power plant was to make the air cleaner, the atmosphere better, but also the economy better for the whole region where people could share as the costs of these um, very inexpensive low carbon alternatives are coming down. Uh, but this uh, attempt to roll us back also is designed to prevent and uh, literally to penalize states if they try to work across their state lines to help themselves and each other out. So uh, as the Attorney General said, it's bad economic policy from that perspective as well. And with that, uh, the press conference is over. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.